Welcome back once again. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basic field recorder workflow available in Pro Tools HD software. So before we start, let's just take a quick look at some of the projects which I'll be working with. Here at the Shell conference, it's a great opportunity for an interactive dialogue between the suppliers and Shell's global management team. And they're all set to answer some very direct and challenging questions from the suppliers. The concept of global is one that, that we're, we're, we're sort of trying to operationalize. Okay, so I'll just stop this on a frame where you can see what's going on. So here you can see a corporate event and we have five people on stage. Each of these has their own radio mic and all of the microphones are being recorded onto a digital field recorder. In this case, it was a sound devices recorder, which records eight independent channels. So we've got the five people on stage. Later in this section, you'll also see that there's um, a little bit where there's a Q&A with some members of the audience. And this was all cut together in Avid Media Composer. This is the AAF export, which I've brought into Pro Tools. But as you can see, we don't have all the tracks of audio. We've just got a single mix down. And in some cases, you know, that sounds fine. Like um, this bit, for example, when people on stage are talking, generally, it sounds okay. It's with closer collaboration with the people that make So what we're actually hearing happen. here is not the individual microphone recordings, but we're hearing the mix down. So basically, at the time of recording, the person doing the location recording recorded each individual mic onto a separate channel on the digital recorder. At the same time, he was also doing his best to balance out all of these mics in real time onto track one of the recorder to try and get something resembling a reasonable rough mix. And generally, this rough mix is what the editor would use at the time of putting the program together. And so, rather than them having to import eight or more tracks into Media Composer or Premiere or whatever editing application they're using, they might prefer purely to work with the mix track. So, it's not perfect, but it's reasonable. Um, I say it's reasonable. There are a couple of exceptions, actually. So let me just show you this section. When it comes to the questions of the audience, um, the recording isn't right at all. I'll just run a section of this. Carsten Lezik from uh, Unilever Ice Cream. So first of all, thanks for giving us the opportunity to be, to be here. So two questions. So I think what you can hear here is not the direct recording. This was basically um, a shotgun mic, which was, you can see in the shot there, actually, which was put above the audience. But the problem was, the person operating the shotgun mic was also the person trying to do the mix. And as I'm sure you can appreciate, it's not very easy to mix audio whilst also swinging a boom pole. And uh, in this case, unfortunately, he, he wasn't able to include these microphones in the mix, but he did capture them as ISO tracks or isolated recordings on the same recorder. So the job that we have now in Pro Tools is to take this rough cut and try and resynchronize the audio from the field recorder replicating all of the edits and re-establishing all of the original multi-track recordings onto the timeline in Pro Tools. But before we do that, let me just show you a couple of things. Maybe if I just uh, zoom in on this. I'm only going to concern myself really with the section which is this question and answers session which starts from here and runs all the way to here. So it's the bit where they're on stage. The rest of it was actually not too bad. So on this dialogue track, we have the location recordings. If I want to, I can go to the view menu and choose clip and optionally display certain metadata from the field recorder. For example, if it's been put in, I can show channel name. This was mix L, so it's the left side of a presumably stereo mix. And maybe I could also display scene and take. So if it's there, that will be displayed. So this has been uh, input as shell take 29. And I believe that also we have some of Take 28. So this is comprised of two separate recordings which have been edited together. If you wanted to, you know, you can see these in the clip list. You could also choose to show the channel name and scene and take there as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the process of bringing in the multi-channel recordings from the field recorder and synchronizing them with what we see on the timeline here replicating any edits which the video editor made. So firstly, I'm going to right click on this track and I need to designate it as a field recorder guide track. So this basically means that any field recorder related workflows which I do from this point onwards will relate not session wide but only to tracks which have been specified as a field recorder guide track. So I'll do that and then if we right click on the track again several other options have now appeared and what we essentially want to happen here is we want to be able to match this audio 
to the multi-track version of it. Let me just close the video window there. Okay, so because I don't want this to apply across the entire track, I've made a timeline selection. Right click again, and I'm gonna choose select areas to search. In older versions of Pro Tools, I think it was versions up to nine, it was a little bit inconvenient because you had to bring all of the multi-channel recordings into Pro Tools to then be able to automatically spot them to the right timeline location. And that can be a problem because, you know, if you've recorded 20 gig of audio, but the editors only used, you know, the equivalent of one gig, then you're going to have a lot of unnecessary audio in your session. So what you can now do is specify areas to search on your hard drive and Pro Tools will only bring in the audio which actually matches your criteria. So in this case, my timeline selection. So I'm going to go select areas to search and at the moment it's empty and I'm going to click on the plus and then I need to choose where the audio is. So here's my session folder. I've actually got an additional folder here of location audio. And so that's where I want Pro Tools to look. I'll choose open and there it is. And then you need to choose save and index. And that might take a short time. In this case, it's been very quick actually. Before I proceed, I'm just gonna show you some of these files in the workspace. And here's the location audio folder. And if you look on the right-hand side, I've got various columns shown here, and these show most of the metadata which has been put into those files. So, for example, we've got the number of channels here, and these are multi-channel recordings, so these are either seven or eight channels in most cases, because it's several mics being recorded all into one WAV file. Of course, it tells us the sample rate and bit depth and the original timestamp. Um, you've also got clip names. So, these should have been put in at the time of recording. Maybe they've given them an initial name and then they've been incrementally numbered as and when they start a new file. It's possible they could also have put channel names in. It would certainly help. Um, a scene, which could perhaps be the name of the project, or of course, if you were shooting a drama, then it would be the scene itself. And we've also got take numbers, shoot date, sound roll, and project. And in fact, if I right click any of these, well, you can see that there are other options which I could display like tape and time code rate and a few other things here. But all of this metadata is embedded in the broadcast WAV file and it's essential that when the video editor is working on their edit with the mix track, they retain all of the embedded metadata and export it. So it's obviously down to them to make sure that this is done properly, but if you're there at the start of the process, it's definitely worth just uh, mentioning it to them. Okay, so let's do this. Right click on here and I can go to Field Recorder Channels Match Criteria and this will allow me to specify exactly what constitutes a match and what doesn't. So for example, it will usually match by time code, but you can also match by any or all of these criteria. So shoot date, scene, take, tape name, and so on. In this project, I'm just gonna leave it with the default settings, um, but you can tailor it as necessary. Okay, so the next process is to once again go to this menu. This is accessible, as I mentioned, with right click and then I'm gonna choose expand channels to new tracks. I think this time I'll go by match criteria. And what we should see is this. So it's searching through all the audio and with a little bit of luck, this should rebuild the multi-channel recordings in perfect sync with the rough cut there on their own respective tracks. And if it's searching through a large volume of audio, this can sometimes take a few minutes. But as you can see in this case, it's going quite quick. And in fact, there we go, so everything's there. Some of the waveforms haven't appeared yet, but they will do in a second. And so what we're seeing here is everyone's individual microphone. And uh, it looks like it's finished, so let's just make these a little bit smaller so we can see what we're working with. And then open the video window, just make that smaller, maybe quarter size, okay? And if I just reference back to this bad recording here, so this was the one where we didn't have the correct mic on the timeline. So it's a boosted up mic, so that's perhaps somebody's stage mic that's been, you know, turned up in level quite a bit. And hopefully we've got the correct one somewhere here. Let's just see what we've got. Maybe this one. Thomas Nelezik from Unilever Ice Cream. So first of all, thanks for giving us the opportunity to be here. And if I listen through another bit, you know, maybe this bit here. To be relevant. See, we've got all those customers that are That's somebody else's mic. We've got another person's mic there. This one looks like his mic. That make that innovation happen. 
So I think that the best way to answer... Okay, the... so we've successfully rebuilt that entire section. The editor didn't have to mess about keeping all these eight tracks of audio on their timeline. They were able to just work with a mix down, which was good enough for the purposes of cutting the pictures. We've now reconstructed everything, given us complete versatility to mix this. And so my next process would be to select all of the correct takes, edit them, put them onto tracks, and then I could start actually mixing it from those clean, isolated mic recordings. Well, that's a quick overview of the field recorder workflow in Pro Tools. Let me know if you've got any questions, and thanks for watching.